What is a chant? Why a chant? A chant means it's a certain clever arrangement of sounds. The meaning itself doesn't matter. We give it in such a way that the meaning also enhances because after all you have a mind and emotion, which is also a major part of you. If you were all energy, if you were just energy, your mind and emotion was completely kept aside, there was no issue at all, I would just take you on an express highway. But you have a mind and emotion which is as dominant or more dominant than the energy actually. So meaning also matters to you. If I just make a clever arrangement of sounds, which, are a which is actually a beautiful chant, but in meaning it means that you are a fool and God is a fool and everybody is a fool. Suppose it means like this, even though the chant works on the energy level, mentally, emotionally you will develop resistance towards this. What am I saying, isn't it? So you also want a pleasant meaning attached, a meaningful meaning attached. It is needed. For you, no, because you anyway don't understand the chant. <laughs> That's the advantage of not knowing the language. <laughs> Otherwise, people would also like the meaning also to enhance their mind and emotion. If they're willing to keep the meaning aside, we could arrange various sounds like this. Let's first explore the meaning because exploring the sound would take a practical session, not talking. <laughs> Brahmananda Swarupa means hmm. Swarupa means the image or a reflection of that, image of that rather. Brahmananda means ultimate joy or ultimate bliss. So this is the image of ultimate blissfulness. Isha means boundless, I mean Isha means that which rules. Jagadisha means it's like enforcing that, saying that. Jaga means existence. Again Isha means, Jaga Desha means the one who rules the existence is ultimate blissfulness, that's what it is saying. The same thing is said in a different way, Akilananda Swarupa means Akila means everything, all inclusiveness is Akila. That which is everything, uh, he is the image of that, he is Mahesha. Mahesha again means uh, an auspicious ruler which is the same thing. Or it is also, Shiva is also referred to as Mahesha. So you must understand this. This is a tradition which is not… which is not a history, which is a her story, okay? This is… this is not a tradition of history. We are not looking at this thing, oh, you called… oh, you said Mahesha, are you talking about Shiva? That's not how it is. Anything auspicious in the world, all those names we will give to Shiva. Shiva has a million names. And we say ultimately he is nothing, because he is nothing. We can call him anything we please. If he was something, we could have only called him one thing. Because he is nothing, we can call him whatever we want. Everything that we like, we call as Shiva. Shiva is called as uh, what Bhairava means he is very fierce one. Shiva is called as Sundarmurti, that means he is the most beautiful one. Shiva is called as Bhuteshwara which means he is the master of the five elements or another meaning is he is a hideous one. So like this it goes on, Shiva is called as the most intelligent, Shiva is called the most simple and innocent, he is called Bolenath. So whatever we like, every name you can attach to him because he is a nobody, he is nothing. Because he is nothing, we can call him whatever we want. So in this context, the mantra is just that. The meaning-wise, it is just saying it is ultimate ecstasy or ultimate blissfulness which is the lord of the existence. That which rules the existence is ultimate ecstasy. So 
this particular thing, this particular chant that we did, we have consecrated it. You utter this and see what it does. Hmm? Has anybody done it for a certain period of time by yourself? Anyone? You, what does it do? Huh? It, it is supposed to take you towards ultimate blissfulness. You can just use this as your sadhana, twenty-four hours if you can chant, that's your sadhana. It'll take you there, nothing else, simply chant. It will just take you there because the sound is consecrated, it is energized, it's alive, it's not just sound. If from nada to nada yoga, that's the difference, you can consecrate the sounds. As you consecrate objects, you consecrate spaces, you consecrate certain sounds. The moment you utter the sound, it creates some completely new reverberation altogether. Oh uh -huh.